We'll begin with some quick introductions. For those of you I haven't met yet, my name is Don Shrum and I lead the product marketing team here at Payit. And joining me is Adam Jensen, who will be doing the bulk of the presenting today. We love Adam. He's a senior solutions consultant here at Payit and is part of the product team. You'll often see him doing product demonstrations or attending various conferences and trade shows for us throughout the year. Thank you so much for being here with us. I'll pass it over to Adam now to say hello, and then he'll dive right into today's content. Take us away. Thanks, Don. Hi, everyone. I'll copy Don and say that we really appreciate the time you've taken to spend with us, whether you're joining us live or watching on demand. So thank you very much. All right. So let's get to today's content here. We've got quite a bit of content today, and I'm going to be bringing together a few different themes along the way. So I want to start there so you know what to expect. We'll be covering a lot of interrelated topics. Some will be just brief acknowledgments. Others we'll be spending a bit of time on. We'll cover best practices for digitizing property tax, of course, customer experience, trust in government, accessibility, and modernization efforts. There's quite a lot to unpack as we're talking about what goes into implementing a world-class digital citizen engagement experience. So I want to quickly highlight where some of the data comes from. I'll be citing quite a few sources here, and these resources you can find if you click on the handout, it's a link to the right of your screen. So once we get done with the webinar today, please check these out. In there, you'll find links to a previously recorded webinar, a blog post, as well as PDFs of the Guide for Buyers and the Digital Government Adoption Index. These are incredibly useful resources, and they go beyond the scope of what we're covering today. There's also a link to connect with us. This form is just an easy way to reach out to us. We'll touch on some relevant information contained in each of these resources and also discuss how all this generally applies to the ways local governments can ideally engage with their constituents in a digital space, as well as how it applies more specifically to property tax collection. Overall, we think you'll probably arrive at the conclusion, if you're not there already, that digital property tax collection is better both for the resident and the agency for many reasons. We'll also provide some specific examples of our partnered clients who are out there racking up the stats to show quantitative proof of the solution. So for those of you that are new to pay it, I'll do a quick high level background on our company. As a company, we were founded 10 years ago. And while you may or may not have heard of us, we're already providing services to over 80 million people across North America. How do we do this? Well, we built world-class products that are truly focused on the citizen and focused on user experience and security. These are foundational elements for our platform. So we certainly don't expect people to take our word for this, but the results speak for themselves. I'll get into some more of the, the quantitative feedback from our clients today. But the partnerships we've built with those clients have resulted in significant increases across the digital channel shift for millions of citizens who today appreciate the relative ease of interacting with their various levels of government. With that success, PAY has seen a lot of public sector recognition, and we and our partner clients have taken home numerous awards over the years. But enough of our background for now. Let's get into today's main content. If you've heard me present any time over the last six years or so, I'm going to sound a bit like a broken record here, as you've probably heard me say this repeatedly. We live in an on-demand world. Those who weren't so sure pre-pandemic almost certainly understand this reality now. All of the streaming services, the rideshare services, food delivery, grocery delivery, all of this to say that expectations have changed. At the heart of any digital modernization effort is the citizen experience. Citizens today expect you to meet them where they are and when they want to interact. 
they expect to do business in a way that's accessible, that's easy to use, that's engaging. Current initiatives and best practices should be a roadmap to an improved citizen experience. Despite that, most digital transactions with government today are still clunky, and those are not our words. One of the resources we'll link at the end of the webinar is our winter 2023 edition of the Paid Digital Government Adoption Index. In this study, citizen respondents are notably appreciated systems that could provide, quote, simplicity, convenience, in-app guides, and help via chat. Despite the positives, they also cited local government digital services having, quote, too many steps or unclear directions or hard to find sections, login problems, that site outages or performance issues, and lack of payment confirmation. This study, which this was conducted by the Center for Digital Government on behalf of PAYA, focused on U.S. state and local agencies with an emphasis on services delivered involving payments. The respondents were groups of agency staff and residents, and more detail can be found in the linked document. I've mentioned this in previous webinars, but this quote is very grounding for me. I have to say, I'm in the same business as you in the audience. I am a citizen and I'm tasked with trying to help governments deliver services to their citizens and to ease any friction in the process. So this quote is something I often go back to when I'm asking myself, why are we doing what we do every day? A little over a year ago, I was sitting in on a panel with one of our current partnered clients. This individual is a county tax collector. So this is particularly relevant to today's discussion, but it's also applicable to many areas of public service in the government. He said, the only thing we have to offer is service. Nobody likes to pay their taxes. <laughs> I'm going to guess this is probably not a shocking or surprising sentiment to our audience. When it comes to property taxes on a basic level, many residents really just want to get in, whether in person or through another channel, pay and get on with their lives. Nobody really likes to pay their taxes. So what we try to do is make it as simple and easy as possible by providing services that help them to be compliant. It probably goes without saying that whatever changes you make, whatever steps you take towards modernization, they need to actually work and allow your staff to continue serving the public. That said, if you're going to make a change, you wanna make sure it's one that encourages a positive reaction from your constituents. And while that quote may not have been surprising, this may be. Here's a tweet from a citizen in St. Louis discussing the city's use of pay its solutions there. This is all presented in a positive and dare I say, delighted manner. Quote, well, isn't this extremely convenient from at Gregory FX daily office? You get an email, you click a button and you pay your property tax bill in a second. On top of that, there are responses where others are chiming in saying, cool, convenient, you can pay your water bill this way, great, keeps receipts handy, great site, works well, and so on. Seriously. Also, and we'll discuss this again later, there's even a comment about how they use this for both city and for other county-related payments and receipts. For those that get the reference, this is a feature, not a bug. At Pay It, we purposely design our solutions to be delightful for the people who use them. Honestly, though, getting positive tweets is pretty cool and unexpected. Here's another tweet talking about the convenience of using St. Louis's Pay It solution to pay their property tax bill quickly and easily. Quote, paid my property tax <laughs> during the Blues game commercial. So easy and quick. He also suggests that maybe he should be our spokesman. That sounds like a good plan to me. Um, and again, there are responses where other residents are chiming in, talking about how user-friendly and easy the system is. Often when citizens talk about the government, whether we're talking about state or provincial, county, city, or other, they often talk about it as if it's this monolithic entity, quote unquote, the government. They tend to ignore the nuance that each level of government is separate, that they're made up of different agencies or departments and run by and staffed by different groups of individuals. 
several months ago, I was talking to a DMV official about this very topic. She was telling a story about citizens coming in for vehicle registration renewals that have stops or holds on them that hold those renewals from happening but from other agencies or bodies like tolling authorities, the courts, and so on. Yet these citizens are expecting that the staff there should be able to resolve all the things right there on the spot at the DMV office because they're all, quote unquote, the government. I was recently reading a post on LinkedIn about a new user experience modeling project from the federal government that focuses on life scenarios rather than the typical personas based models. I'm not going to go into detail here, but you know, feel free to email me after the webinar if you want to link to it. Anyway, what really stood out to me and what I wanted to share here is a quote I saw in the comments section made by a state director of user experience design that probably puts what I just said about the perception of the monolithic government a little more eloquently than I did. He said, quote, in any life situation of need, people receive services from federal, state, and local government, which don't necessarily communicate each other's services well. To people, it's all, quote, the government, and likely feels as confusing and overwhelming as three-dimensional chess. This is a relevant sentiment across all levels of government across North America. Consider a related phenomenon. According to the Edelman Trust Barometer, only 39% of Americans trust government institutions and only one in three report having had a positive digital experience with government institutions. As I said earlier, we're all in the same business of easing the friction between government and its constituents. From a study by Deloitte Insights, we learned that positive digital experiences can build up to a fourfold increase in trust and that residents are nine times more likely to agree that an agency is achieving its mission after they've had a positive digital experience. So intermingled in all of this is combating this lack of trust, the confusion, the sense of being overwhelmed, and probably quite a bit of frustration at times. It's not uncommon to hear our clients in discussing some of the issues that they had before partnering with Pay It say that frustration with a previous online experience often led residents to come in in person or pay by mail with a check. Obviously, this is moving the needle in the opposite direction from where we want to be towards more expensive channels of interaction that take more time, that require more staff, and so on. I've brought this stat in the past, and I think it's good to get a baseline. According to the Urban Institute, state and local governments collected $577 billion, that's billion with a B, in property tax revenue in 2019. And this accounted for 17% of general revenue. Again, probably not a surprise to people here in the audience. Part of the reason that we're focusing on property tax in today's webinar is the disproportionate effect of property tax collection in the local government revenue stream and consequently in the delivery of services to constituents therein. One of the things we found over time is that while the pay it platform can help streamline a lot of government service offerings, many of our clients start off by using our solution and collecting property tax payments and later add additional services to the platform after tackling this elephant. Digitizing property tax collection can dramatically affect the path to and speed of modernization for a local government. Our partner clients, some of whom I'll showcase later, see faster time to revenue and therefore faster ability to pay for the services they provide taxpayers with and it shows the most immediate return on investment. Little wonder then that this is the starting line for things. Consider what we talked about earlier. Positive digital engagements can build trust in government. Also, studies show that digital service can result in, on average, $15 in agency savings per transaction. So considering the outsized effect property tax revenues have on local government, this could be a significant savings. All right, this seems like a good time to break things up with an audience poll. So I will turn back to Dawn here. Thanks, Adam. 
We're going to get the poll set up right now. So please, if you happen to be browsing to different web browsers, I know I'm sure nobody else is looking at a different tab while listening to the webinar. Come on back to us and look at the question on the screen. We'd love to get your feedback. And the question we have for you to answer today is, for your agency, what is the biggest driver to expanding digital services? We've got five options on the screen. And if you can take a look at those and pick the one that resonates most with you, we would love to see the responses and see what the trend is from our audience. So I'll give you one moment. I see a couple responses coming in here. All right, there's a couple more. I'll, I'll let our production team make the call. Are we ready to show the responses on the screen to everyone? All right, and let's see if we can see those results. It looks like we do have a winner, Adam. It appears that if you, if everyone, if you looked at the close tab, you can see the results. It appears that better online experience for residents is the answer. That doesn't come as a big surprise for me. What do you think, Adam? No, it's kind of what I expected to happen there, but it's, it's good to see that it's consistent. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in a second or two. So thank you everyone for participating here. That was very helpful. So, all right. So I still started off this modernization discussion with digital engagement. And now you're probably starting to see why it, it keys right in there with the poll. But to, to get a little bit more detail here, we should look at what poll response in the public sector is saying are their goals and how that impacts digital government initiatives and best practices. In the handout section of the webinar is a link to a blog post related to NASIO's Priority Strategies, Management Processes, and Solutions for 2023 Guide. <clears throat> the relevance here is that if we're considering the types of things that are at the top of the list for many of our technology thought leaders in the public sector, such as state and local CIOs, we're likely on solid ground. I've referenced this before in past webinars with previous year's versions as well, and it's as good a place to start as any when looking at best practices. Of course, every county, every city, and even every agency or department within jurisdictions are all unique to some degree. So you might rank them differently, but I'd guess they're all on your list of objectives. Also, many of you have likely already started down the path to implementing some of these initiatives already. This list is more about giving us a solid starting point and these are all applicable at all levels of government. I'm not gonna go through the whole list. I just wanna highlight one that's particularly relevant today. The link to the blog post I mentioned earlier in the handout section of the webinar contains the whole top 10 list and talks about this more in depth for you to read later. It probably won't surprise you that these all align very closely with Paid's platform. But the one that I really wanted to focus on is number two, the expansion of digital government and digital services. This is one of the recurring themes that was accelerated by the pandemic and continues to be one of the top focal points. Providing more avenues to digitally engage with your citizens is critical. Increasing digital government services has been and will continue to be a priority for all involved. One of the issues or concerns that always comes up here is that when we think about modernizing our property tax systems, the focus is often on the current system of record and how to improve upon that without losing core or required functionality. If there are things that need to be resolved in your system of record, you may need to consider replacement, but you may just need a new front end interface for your citizens. We'll talk about this again shortly, but the summation here is that when we're looking at the top six on this list as a whole, Digital government modernization is about moving towards secure cloud-based SaaS models that revolve around a single user identity and away from older legacy systems 
to improve upon the citizen or resident experience. The topic of the second poll question brings us back to that second bullet point on the list and to this chart from the 2022 NASIO tech forecast. Expansion of digital government services is critical, but the biggest driver for this expansion by an overwhelming margin, and this was directly mirrored in the poll results, so obviously the audience agrees, is providing a better online experience for citizens. In the Pay it Digital Government Adoption Index for winter 2023, respondents were asked about the biggest drivers of digital transformation of payments specifically at their organizations. They're given the option to select up to three and far and away the top two choices, both as benefits to their residents and, and ranking over all the agency only or mutual benefits were providing more payment options and improving the experience for residents. Again, all these things are lining up. Everybody's looking at this from the same point that online experience is, is definitely one of the most important, if not the most important thing for these. In the same digital government adoption index, we also see evidence of another trend that aligns with goals of expanding digital government engagement services. 64% of agencies surveyed want more than half of their payments coming in to be online through digital channels by 2024. Today, the same respondents are at 29%. That's a huge shift. There are many situations where paying property taxes through other channels, whether in person, over the phone, or online can be difficult for people. Our platform focuses on making a point of setting clear expectations and can walk the resident through the process, streamlining things, helping them adopt more cost effective ways of paying and just making the experience more pleasant along the way. In one of our client testimonials, a client talks about resident frustration with the previous online experience and how it led people to come in in person or pay by mail with a check. Sometimes having multiple dwellings or they have multiple types of properties, they have a home, they have a car, a boat, a business, or some combination of those, all of which they have to pay taxes on. Another client talked about this and remarked how much easier things are to pay all of these at one time through our platform today. Pace platform handles all this easily and in a way that's intuitive for the residents. We love hearing our clients talk about all the positive impacts they've had from partnering with us and providing our platform to the residents. All right, let's take another break for another audience poll. This is our second and, and last poll for today. So back to you, Don. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, now we're all pros at taking these polls. So we have one last question, and it is, what is preventing your agency from beginning or further pushing your modernization efforts? We hear feedback from a lot of customers that sometimes even if they start, the process can feel long. Um, so is it uncertainty around what next steps to take, the expense of replacing old systems, lack of available resources or staff to make those changes, or lack of resources to promote that the new solution has been made to the residents that are actually using it? Take a minute to pick the one that resonates most with you and then click Submit. And I see we've got a pretty good chunk of responses, but we're still waiting on a couple more. All right, I'll pitch it over to our production team to make the call. Are we ready to close this one out? Looks like it. Now you can all see the results in the close section, but it looks like we've got a front runner, the expense of replacing the outdated systems kind of a split between the other three responses. Adam, what do you think? Is that something you hear a lot when you're you're talking through this with customers? Yeah, it is. And it's this is actually interesting compared to the last poll. That one, I definitely had a pretty good idea of where I thought things were going to go based on other polls. This, I, I kind of hear the responses are all over the place sometimes. So the one where it ended up here, the, the expense of replacing an outdated system of record, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about that. So that's actually 
interesting and probably a good sign for helping folks move forward from this point. So very interesting. All right. I'm going to keep going here. So one of the resources I mentioned earlier that can be found in the handouts is a link to another webinar we did here titled 2023 Top 3 Needle Moving Strategies for Digital Government Service Delivery. By no means am I going to reiterate all of what's in there. There's a lot of good material in there, a lot of good conversation, but I do want to talk a little bit about how this theme overlaps with how you should be thinking about some of the strategies for moving towards increasing and better digital engagement with your residents. So the first of the three top needle movers is to focus on a resident centric experience. This can be as much about architecture as well as ease of use and accessibility. Meet them where they are. Today's ex expectation in this on-demand world is that you do need to meet people where they are. Accessibility, however you define it, is important. Whether that means making online interactions easier for people with different needs or for those that may have a long way to travel to your property tax office or city hall, or who can't easily afford to take time off from work. Part of the solution includes omni-channel payments. So more payment options, again, was listed in the study earlier as the biggest driver of digital transformation of payments. This includes web, includes mobile, interactive voice response, point of sale readers, and even a cash option that can be incorporated into uh, solution, which is especially beneficial to and inclusive for those who are unbanked or underbanked. These payment options should also have the ability to safely store those payment methods. The pay platform includes a trademark GovWallet that not only securely stores all these payment methods through tokenization, but also allows your systems to access settings store contact information, important documents, receipts for all the transactions or payments that they've made across any interactions with any level of government where they've used the paid solutions. The second of the top three needle movers is more of an awareness piece. You need to know that you can modernize the front end system independently from the back end system. And this goes back to that last poll where like part of what's preventing your agency from moving forward is that the expense of replacing that outdated system of record. It's important to know that the system or systems your staff are using data don't have to be the same ones that your residents are using. Traditionally, vendors have tried to force one system to handle the front end and the back end. Today, however, it's increasingly typical to have separate systems for staff users and for resident users as they likely have significantly different usage. Your residents and your staff have quite different needs. Composability is the new customization. Systems that try to be the end all be all for everything are losing traction in the marketplace. Composability is about software solutions that are more like building blocks that can be configured and integrated into your agency's model to serve its specific needs and bring market leading solutions together. So you're getting the best software to handle various aspects of your operations. Touching on both of the first two needle movers, I've heard this many times from prospective clients that they want to have a single identity through which the resident is interacting with them. I've also heard just as many times, but we don't know how we're going to do it. With a play Paid platform, simply put, we've created a citizen-centric solution that allows your constituents to interact with a multitude of services, gather information, store information, make payments, and more in a way that scales across jurisdictions through one connective layer. We built integrations into the various backend systems providing a single front-end interface. This is something that would not be at all possible if you expected your systems to handle the front and back end of everything. We have residents, for example, in the state of Kansas, making property tax payments, paying citations, submitting 311 reports, renewing vehicle registrations, and more from a single app that connects them to city, county, and state services. 
we are focused on of many public sector thought leaders, but to continue that, digital government modernization is about security and flexibility. It's cloud-based and it generally relies on integrations to assemble composable solutions to build better resident engagement that's focused on the, the individual. The Payit platform supports all these initiatives and we've made integrations easy. Working with Payit means less expensive solutions and short implementation timelines focused on learning your business workflows and setting up the needed integrations with your system or systems of record. We use a common API layer that is flexible, secure, it's designed to work with any back office system, be it homegrown, on-prem mainframe, database flat file import, or even modern cloud systems. I don't need to tell you what it's like to go through replacing an entire back office ERP system. The news is full of stories over the years of expensive projects that sometimes never get off the ground, of multi-million dollar cost overruns, and so on. With Pay It, modernization is made easy. Substantial user engagement change is easy. Integrations are easy. As a side note, we have in the past heard other vendors in the market trying to use scare tactics, trying to push people away from these types of composable solutions like ours. And I'll get into some of our current clients and how they're doing today shortly. But suffice to say, all of them are using one or more systems of record that are currently integrated with our platform. So it's been proven over and over and over again. It doesn't really matter what the system is. With Pay It, you can just focus on that end user experience. And Someday when you do need to change your system of record, if that's still a need, we can adjust the integrations and your systems don't even need to be aware of or worrying about changing how they interact with you. The third of the top needle movers is driving adoption with effective marketing. I'm gonna pass this section to Dawn. Thanks, Adam. You know, as I'm listening to you present, it's clear that there's a lot to consider when evaluating a digital property tax solution, but it would really be a shame to spend so much time implementing a solution that only a small percentage of your residents actually use. And when we talk to customers, historically, that's that's been the case. They've done a lot of work to put a payment portal on their site or take payments digitally, but they're just not seeing adoption. That's why the third needle mover is finding that partner whose goals are aligned with yours and can help you drive adoption. So our entire team at Payit is focused on driving adoption, not just marketing. We have engineers and product managers who are obsessed with making the platform easy to use and adding new features that make the solution sticky. So your residents want to come back and use it. So that's key. And we have customer service teams and customer success managers speaking with our clients and end users constantly to get feedback and incorporating that feedback in the platform to make it even better. And our, our marketing team has seen impressive results when working with our customers as an extension of their communications and public information teams, bringing, you know, we bring the marketing best practices and a large toolkit with proven strategies to the table that can drastically increase the adoption by your residents and accelerate the speed and total amount of overall revenue collected during a property tax se season. And these are all part of the package, no extra fees, no hassle, and we do it for life. We really think that's important. So you should look for a partner that doesn't think about marketing your service as a one-time promotional event, but will develop an annual plan that complements your existing you know, promotional activities and channels you're already using. We prepare for the next property tax season as soon as the current one concludes by analyzing all the data around payment trends, and timelines and taking these into account for our marketing activities the following year. And by taking a programmatic, proactive approach in this way to promoting the service, we continue to help our customers increase their online adoption rates year over year. And moving forward to the next slide, I have to take this opportunity to brag about one of our partners at the city of Grand Rapids. You know, this is just one example that happened recently of how we develop long-term partnerships with our, with our customers. The city identified the opportunity to take advantage of advertising space on buses, a great idea since they're constantly driving around town and they're owned by the city, right? 
So our team was able to collaborate with the city's teams to design and deploy these catchy graphics on the outside and inside of buses to run throughout the property tax season. And this was something that we didn't know from the last season, but came up. And since we have such a close working relationship, we're talking to them on a weekly basis, we were able to collaborate and make it happen. So we're so happy when our clients send us these real world, world photos of their work and we just get to see the results in real time and, and take these ideas and share them with others like you. So I'll stop bragging now and I'll, I guess I'll hand it back to you, Adam. No, that is so cool. So I'm glad that, yeah, we take the time to brag about them. So I told you, I would talk about results. So let's do that. Even a year ago, a lot of the modernization talk centered around the needs that were highlighted or exacerbated by a global pandemic from increasing cybersecurity threats and from just better technology that's now more widely available. That said, we're not talking pie in the sky, futuristic potential. We're talking about solutions that we've been delivering to our partner clients for years now. And I want to take a couple of minutes to highlight some of their achievements because it's important to see how it impacts others like you. So this one right here, I love being able to talk about and highlight recent awards that our friends have received. They're all so talented that it really feels like I'd be able to highlight someone new on every webinar we do. Anyway, I'm really excited for our friends in Guilford County, North Carolina for the recent 2022 Local Smart Award for Local IT Innovation of the Year. If you want more information or you want to hear how they've done it, please reach out, let us know. But as a quick takeaway, the, the county's tax director tax director points out that residents have overwhelmingly adopted the new digital property tax solution. And at the time of the award, they had already collected over $43 million in revenue just since March of 2021. So very cool stuff there. And I'm not going to go through all of these, especially with the time here, but these are just some selected highlights and these are all significant changes big wins here. We're looking at things like 40%, 58%, 65%, 72%, 85% increases in collective revenue in these examples, along with huge gains in online transactions and more. The the stuff that Don was talking about in helping the partners drive adoption is really critical to that. So this is just simply amazing. And again, if you want to learn more about their experiences, please reach out. All right, time to wrap up things here. First, though, as a reminder, if you haven't done so already, you can submit your questions for us through the Q&A section on the Big Marker interface, which should be on the right-hand side of your screen there. Also, if we run a little over time, again, we'll be sending out a link to the recording. So stay as long as you're able to, but don't worry about it. So what have we covered today? Hopefully I've given you both some good content as well as some good resources to help you in your modernization journey. Please use the handouts. Please reach out to us for more information. If I leave you with nothing else, one big takeaway is that digital modernization focused on citizen engagement is the goal of public sector thought leaders and it can be done relatively quickly and easily if your goals are aligned with these initiatives. Certainly other online solutions exist, but they're typically siloed and the adoption statistics are less than stellar in the public sector or they don't cover all the use cases. But this is in part why here at Pay It, we focus so much, so deliberately on user experience and driving adoption through community outreach as partners with our clients. So before we get to the Q&A, I want to throw things back to Dawn for some closing notes. Yes. Thanks again, everyone, for attending and for the live audience for your participation in the poll questions. First off, after you close out the webinar today, you'll be directed to a five-question survey. Please take a couple minutes to respond as this is incredibly helpful 